Mr. Machitko, perhaps I should start with you because I was looking at uh, your, your column in Business Day this morning. One of the things that you say somewhere in the middle of the column is that, for me, the real issue here is whether Malema, like his former role model, President Jacob Zuma, is the Houdini of ANC succession battles. What is at the heart of this comment here? Well, I mean, there are two issues people have been debating. Mm-hmm. Um, and they relate to whether he has sufficient support in the leadership of the ANC to have the NEC, first of all, uh, putting his matter on its agenda, and uh, secondly, to have the NEC deciding in his favor by escalating the matter to a national conference in December. That's the first issue. The second issue is, at at the conclusion of this uh, disciplinary uh, process, what is likely to happen? As far as I'm concerned, there's only one thing to debate, um, that, that is the length or duration of his suspension. Yeah. Because we all know that the minimum he will get is the invocation of his two-year suspended sentence, which means the, the minimum that will come out of the argument in mitigation and aggravation is a two-year suspended sentence. But what we must highlight is the fact that he is not losing his membership he, because he is not going to be expelled. Sure, it will uh, be His suspended. membership will be suspended hmm. for, for, for two years or more. Hmm. But um, even Houdini, um, I think, would have found it difficult to get himself out of this pickle. So in other words, this is it for him, at least for the next two years? Uh, that, that's my assessment, yes. You know, it's quite interesting because right next to your column, there's also a column by uh, uh, Professor Friedman who says, in reality, Malema seems to be running out of options. He says, the tone of Cyril Ramaphosa's presentation over the weekend suggested the appeals committee, once mitigating evidence heard, so that the process can seem credible, not because it feels the sentences were too harsh. The, the sentence might be reduced slightly, but a lengthy suspension is almost certain. Do, do you agree with that, Mr. Machigri? Well, I don't know whether... Um the appeals committee felt the sentences were too harsh or not. What I do know is that uh, th- th- there was a procedural error, an error of judgment on the part of the National Discipline Committee. There is no persuasive argument that has been put forward mm-hmm. to explain why they did not allow sentence in mitigation. Had they done that, this matter would have been done and dusted last Saturday. Mr. Ibrahim, do you agree that, uh, that that's what should have happened, that they perhaps should have been allowed to mitigate uh, in front of the NDCA as opposed to going back to the NDC? Yeah, look, I mean, I think they ought to have. I think, I think they should have. It would have conformed to the principles of, of justice. It would have made the process uh, fairer than, 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 than it ordinarily seems. But, of course, the ANC's rules don't sort of envisage that this is, in fact, a... Once, once catch all process, which is going to um, allow both. Because look, I mean, as 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 they make it quite clear, mm-hmm. they're a voluntary organisation which can decide and define its own disciplinary codes. Um, that said, no voluntary organisation can afford. Uh, I think, to be seen working outside the natural principles of fairness um, and justice. So they ought to have done that. I think it was an oversight, but that has now been remedied. And with that remedy, uh, it also, I think, cuts um, Malema's options of, in fact, going to court. I think there's very little now that he can actually go to a court and argue and say, look, this has been so fundamentally flawed and unfair that I didn't get, I didn't get a proper hearing. I didn't, in fact, get the chance to appeal. I didn't, in fact, get the chance to, mit- to, to argue in mitigation. Oh. All of those now have, in fact, been covered. And there's no substantive uh, thing that he can, in fact, take before court and say, look, substantively, hmm. this thing is wrong because this is a voluntary organization that decides it and defines its own codes. Interesting. Um, uh, uh, Professor Guto, this is uh, well, well within your realm, really, uh, legalese here. Uh, whether or not he has any basis upon which he can take this matter to court? Um, I think that the idea of going to court at this point is uh, still premature. If you, we, we listened or read the decision of the um, uh, <clears throat> National Disciplinary Committee of Appeals, uh, they did indicate that the matter may actually come back to them and uh, to that committee. The reason for that is that it has been referred back, um, and therefore uh, it's a question of whether the National Dis- Committee will consider this uh, seriously and not simply go through 
uh, motions of uh, pretending to do so um, and to give some consideration to whatever mitigation uh, would have uh, evidence would have been given or aggravation uh, evidence would have been given. And I believe that um, uh, people are going to watch how that is done. If it is not done uh, uh, in, in a manner that looks legitimate and, uh, and so on, uh, it will have to go back to the appeals committee. And after that, they may make um, another bid to, for a review by the National Executive Committee. Let me ask uh, Mr. Obrimachika to respond to the issue of then this matter going back to the NDC. Now, here's the thing. The ANC Youth League will argue, I suppose, again, that, but we told you that we do not trust these people, hence we wanted some of them to recuse themselves. Now, you taking us back to these people, how do you expect that process to be legit in our eyes, Mr. Ob- Obrimachika? Well, I, I, I was part of a debate over the weekend, and, and uh, two views uh, were posited. Uh, the first that a body that made this procedural error cannot be the same body um, to which argument in mitigation and aggravation should be made. Mm. But there was the other view that uh, maybe the error was made in good faith, and if it was made in good faith, um, it, is, it is not a statement about the integrity of the individuals who constituted the panel. Very interesting. But again, and also just re- referring to the response, because uh, outside Soweto, the spokesperson, Flo Chibambu, was, uh, spoke to the media, and wh- what he said was that, no, 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 we're fine, we're going to go through the processes, but um, if we are unhappy with uh, the NDC, again, we'll, we'll appeal. Which means that there is a very real possibility of this matter going back to Cyril Ramaphosa's table again. Aubrey? Well, I, 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 if, if they impose... Um, okay, there are three possibilities here. The, the NDC can stick to its original sentence. Um, it can impose a lesser sentence, and of course the minimum being, being uh, two years, or it can impose a harsher sentence. I think if they impose a harsher sentence or stick to their original sentence, uh, the Youth League will go back to the Appeals Committee to appeal the sentence. Mm. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Ibrahim Fakir, talk to me then about the, the credibility of the process one, but also the long-term implication within the ANC. Because as I say, uh, Stephen Friedman is arguing that this just deals with uh, Malema, uh, the symptoms, not really the problems that are, uh, are deep within the ANC. Look, I mean, I, I might go along with that view to a certain degree, but I would extend it to continue that I don't think that it's just merely symptomatic. It's also substantive. I mean, I think you can't deal with the substance without dealing with the symptom. So they've been trying to do both, um, in my view. Whether that's going to succeed, of course, is another matter entirely. Now, why am I saying this? I mean, I think, look, Malema was symptomatic of a particular kind of politics or perhaps a particular kind of problems within the ANC, and so were some of the other leaders uh, within the Youth League. And I think by addressing those symptoms, one is going some way in addressing some of the substantive issues, that is, dealing with the question of discipline, saying that you can have certain policy preferences, you can have certain policy views, for instance, on the question of Botswana, but you can't, in fact, go on to the point that you're going to start making actionable statements about regime change and about your contribution to regime change and how you're going to do it in those societies. That literally is the thing which, steps, which, which, which goes out. I think they're quite clear in kind of sending that message by saying these are the people who said so, this is how we're dealing with the ill-discipline, and this is the kind of substantive matter that we're trying to actually address. The same comes to the question, and and this is where it gets slightly murkier, Mm -hmm. about policy preferences with regard to leadership style and what kind of leadership um, you would want to see happening uh, through the ANC and within the ANC. And then I think the youthling may substantively say, look, what is the problem with us, in fact, expressing certain kinds of leadership preferences, especially when it comes to style and it comes to content? around issues of Africa, around addressing the question of race and racism, Mm -hmm. around addressing issues of race and inequality, race and poverty in the society. Those are issues which are within our rights to canvas. And I think the ANC is going to find it very hard to be able to now convince uh, people that they're going to be able to be able to work 
freely and outside of what they might call democratic centralism or the kind of decisions taken by a, cert- a leadership, a view taken by a leadership on certain matters and not be able to hold views different from that. Of course, some people might argue well, there aren't many leaders in the ANC at the moment who are prepared to take views, outspoken views at least, on, on, on issues and simply and merely defer to the fact that, well, the ANC as a whole decides. So I think it is going to create that murkiness. Does it deal with the question of ill-discipline and people not kind of abiding by the rules of the ANC? Well, I think the reality is that Malema may be able to well argue that if he's subjected to discipline, there are several other leaders, not just in the youth league, but in the mother body itself, mm. who ought to be brought up on charges. So I think the level of consistency, the way in which the process is, is, is viewed as a whole, and, and, and the origination of the process is really what is, it, is going to be at question. The fact that there are objective reasons why Malema and some of his cohorts were in fact found guilty and upheld by the by the disciplinary. I think those substantive issues are objectively covered. Mm. But it's the behavioral aspects which, in fact, aren't, and it's the consistency aspects which I think are not, in fact, uh, dealt with properly. Mm. Uh, and the consistency issues are, go- are the ones which actually give rise to the fact that the accusations that this is politically motivated and is being dealt with mm. um, because he's making leadership preferences, um, not, not only on a content level, but also at a personal level. Hmm. All right, Mr. Majid, let me, let me bring you back again on the issues perhaps slightly, well, raised by Ibrahim Fakir here. Discipline versus um, public debate, raising of ideas publicly. To what extent will this then ultimately silence even those that uh, were starting to say, well, maybe within the ANC we can start raising our voices and saying, and, and saying whatever we want to say, be it about leadership or policy publicly? Well, let me take you back to the National General Council of September 2010. Yeah. Remember that the ANC decided uh, that NGC that it would draw a line in the sand, and anyone who crossed it um, would be dealt with decisively uh, by the party. But you will also remember that uh, no sooner had that um, decision been taken than a group um, belonging to the Youth League stormed the stage at the very NGC. And the expectation among some delegates was that the line should have been drawn there. 